This is Madman Dan here at the Virtual Madhouse, coming to you after a small hiatus. With V4 approaching and having arrived for some fortunate individuals, but not for me, as you can see, I'm still on my virtual board, I thought it would be a good time to go over a couple points V3 players should take note of when coming to V4, things that might trip them up and throw a spanner in, into the works. Before this, however, I'm going to take a moment to shamelessly promote a charity event I'll be participating in this Saturday, uh, Saturday, November 5th. I'll be taking part in Extra Life 2022, which is supporting my local children's hospital. Uh, for this, I'll be streaming games for 24 hours, and as much as I would like to say, uh, I would be playing a 24 hour game of Global War 1936. My friends who I am doing this with are not as mad as I am. If you happen to be, uh, let me know and we can organize something for next year. So I invite uh, anyone watching this to come in and say hi and consider donating to this cause or consider donating to your local children's hospital or medical system. But now on to the video and now on to point one. Lightning War, or Blitzkrieg as it's now called in V4. This one's the German special rule that lets you do two attacks in a single turn. Uh, one thing you should be aware of, in V4, you cannot combat or non-combat through zones that you have captured during the Lightning War round. So in, in V3, what players would commonly do is they would have, have stack a bunch of stuff in Western Germany, uh, and on their first impulse, they would attack into Belgium. So let's just pretend that happens. We kill these poor soldiers and move everything into Belgium. And the units that could blitz would blitz into Picardy. I'll just move that stuff in. And let's say we can also move these couple units in as well, even though I don't, I don't think I actually have space. In either case, in, in V3, what you could do is from this point on your second impulse, all these characters, units that could move to, could participate in an attack on Paris. However, in V4, you cannot do this. Since this was uh, taken this turn, anything in this zone on at the end of the first impulse uh, can't make any non-combats through here, or combat moves. So if you miss this point, then you might get stuck in Picardy with not enough to take Paris or surround it, and that wouldn't be very fun for you. Point number two, the Soviets and Manchuko. So if the Soviets and the Japanese go to war, and the Soviets happen to attack and take the Japanese territories. Uh, the Soviets have a choice. They can either keep this territory for themselves or possibly return it to either of the Chinese faction because these four territories count as Chinese home country. So what the Soviet player might want to do is return it to the CCP to make them stronger and give them a better chance of evolving. However, there is a caveat to that that some players might miss on their first playthrough. One Soviet victory point is uh, holding on to the all of Manchuka, which I think is these four territories, and the Kuril Islands. If uh, early on in the game, instead of taking these territories for themselves, the Soviet player decides to give them to the CCP, uh, they are the CCPs, so that strategic objective is going to be locked off for you for the rest of the game, most likely. Unless if Japan is playing nice and will uh, take these territories back for Japan, which lets you then reconquer them and then keep them for yourselves. But I don't think that's going to happen very much, so keep in mind that this is an important decision that I've seen uh, 
mess up a Russian player playing online before, so keep an eye out for that one. Point number three, uh, Soviet and Finland. So the Soviet and Finnish uh, diplomatic relations, or AKA the Soviets trying to conquer as much as Finland as they want, uh, is a bit different in V3, or sorry, V4. So to aid me explain this, and maybe to aid you guys figure it out on your own after this video is over, I've made myself a little flow chart over here, and we can maybe go over it and figure out exactly what happens during uh, during this action. So, say the USSR wants to attack Finland. Now, the first question they have to ask is: Is the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact in effect? Because Bruce, because if it is or not, there is a uh, two diametrically different situations that might occur. So, let's assume that they are not at war. I mean, sorry, not at war. Not <laughs> The molotov Ribbentrop Pact is not signed. Then the Soviet player has to ask, are they at wartime income? In V4, the Soviet's wartime income is 19 out of a possible 46 for their full income. Uh, at 19 income, they can all declare war on anyone that's around them. Uh, so until they reach that point, they uh, can't do anything. But assuming they get to that, uh, threshold, they can then choose to attack Finland, in which case Finland is controlled or aligns to Great Britain. In V4, uh, if the common turn attacks, that goes to the Allies. So all if that were to happen and the Soviets were to attack, all this territory would be controlled by or aligned to Great Britain. Okay, so let's say the uh, Molotov Ribbentrop Pact is signed. Then uh, the Soviets then have to ask, are they at wartime income? If they are not, they can still attack. They can, but they only can attack Vilpuri, which is this border province in V3. I guess it's called Karyala. Uh, if they are at wartime income, um, they can attack um, any bit of Finland they want. All right, so let's say USSR attacks and they actually are able to capture Vilpuri, and let's say they capture Lapland as well. Uh, but they have to do this in a special order, as I think you will, I will try to explain to you. They have to attack Karjala last because if they take Karjala, the Soviets immediately have to choose whether they want to sign or not sign the Moscow Peace Treaty. Uh, the Moscow Peace Treaty is basically, if it's signed, uh, USSR and Finland are at peace, which means that Finland is no longer controlled by uh, Germany, which I, I think I should, I should have mentioned up here. If USSR attacks and the pact is signed, Finland is controlled by Germany. But anyway, back on track. Um, you, if the Moscow Peace Treaty is signed, USSR and Finland are at peace. So uh, Finland is not is neutral and is not controlled. So they no longer get recruitment rules and they no longer can receive lend lease. Um, according to the rules, the Soviets still can lend lease to them if they wanted to, but that probably won't happen. So say if the USSR want to attack Finland again um, down the line, uh, the USSR, USSR would have to pay five IPP to the bank to break the treaty, and the USSR and Finland go to war. And according to the current version of the rules, Finland aligns to Germany, irrespective of uh, German and Soviet relations. Um, so let's say the Soviets do not wish to sign that peace treaty. Uh, why would they not? Well, one of the Soviet victory objectives is to capture Helsinki, and doing so gets them a couple free techs or free tech rolls. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. So, so say they want to do that. They don't sign the pact, and if I did not point out before, uh, once the Soviets take this territory, they must decide at that moment whether they want to sign that pact or not. They can't, you know, hum and haw and decide to sign it later. It's a one-time choice. So they choose not to sign. They want the whole shebang. So USSR and Finland remains at war. Hooray! Uh, that means, you know, the Germans still control them. 
and can still lend these. Uh, then we have to come back to the similar <laughs> uh, earlier question, are they at wartime income? So as mentioned before, if they weren't at wartime income, all they can do is attack this zone. So if they don't sign that treaty and take that zone, then they just kind of have to sit there until they reach 19 IPP. Uh, but once they pass that point, then uh, all bets are off and the Russians can take and conquer the rest of Finland. Um, and then as normal, uh, once the Germans and the Russians go to war, whatever is remaining of Finland will align to Germany. Clear as mud. <laughs> it's, I think this, this whole area is a bit much to take in, so you kind of just have to take it step by step. But with that, those are my three points I want to share with everyone. I hope you've learned a thing or two, or three, and uh, I wish you all uh, happy matches and let the dice be with you. This has been Madman Dan signing off. I hope everyone has a great night. Bye.